I'm going to begin the second part of the uh, QRP Labs signal generator construction. These two pieces of metal came with the case or enclosure kit. These three items came comprised the signal generator kit plus the synthesizer module that I built in the first part. As always, QRP Labs provides excellent documentation. This is the assembly manual for this. There's more paper than there are parts. There's in fact 14 pages of assembly and along with this we have an operations manual which is 18 pages. Now really you would have no need to print these out if you had a a computer or laptop on your workbench. I just like paper. I'm going to use the same solder and soldering iron as I used in part one, but instead of the stick vise, I'm going to use these brass blocks. And just to confuse the issue, These brass blocks are sold by QRP kits, not to be confused with QRP labs. They're a, a way of holding a printed circuit board where you're using leaded components. Stick the components through here and you've got much lead sticking out. This gives you a nice way to allow the leads to poke through. Turn over, solder. Now, I can move these away from the corner because there are some solder joints that right now are falling underneath the brass blocks. Order of construction. I see no reason for deviating from the order given in the instruction manual or the construction manual not instruction so and it tells me to install this socket first all right first thing we're going to install is the socket and it is polarized it's polarized by this notch at one end no notch at the other end. Direction of installation is indicated by a notch on the silk screening. See a little notch there. The other end, no notch. So we had no bent legs, so it just dropped right in. I like to bend over two diagonally opposite legs to keep the socket from falling out. Now two diagonally opposite corners soldered. You see the uh, socket is standing away from the circuit board a little bit. What I do to take care of that is without pushing yet, I remelt the soldered joint. And once the solder is melted, not before, I'll push on it, seating the socket. Now 
now the socket's down against the board. Then solder all the unsoldered pins. There are five ceramic capacitors supplied with this kit. These are 100 nanofarad capacitors. Four of them will stay on the tape reel and go into the spare parts bin. One of them, right here, will go into this board. So these are spare parts. Don't be worried if they're left over. The switches are pre-bent. There's two of them. One goes here and one goes underneath this block. Their legs are pre-bent and they are not square, they're rectangular pattern legs. That is the leg layout is rectangular. They will just sit in these holes And there's normally enough bend, if you don't bang it very hard, to keep the switch from falling out while you solder it. In order to install the other switch, I'll have to temporarily remove one of the QRP ME blocks. Even though we're going to probably use front mounted switches, uh, these switches are normally open so I can parallel uh, the front panel mounted switches. Also, there's a separate set of terminals for the switches. So here's a capacitor, a crystal, and a switch installed. There are two 10 terminal header modules. One's here and one is over here. Now the one way of making sure they're installed correctly is to attach them to the uh, synthesizer. I've already tacked one in here. The synthesizer module, and I think I have it plugged in wrong, but since it's just a spacer right now, it doesn't matter. Now, the, we're going to take this back off, but in order to align these headers and make sure they're perpendicular to this board and matching this, just install it that way. With the daughter board installed, the synthesizer board installed, just go ahead and solder 20, term, 20 solder joints. When installing R4, let me take it back out for a second. See the legs are bit slightly curved and they're also narrowed right here. So you put the three legs in the three holes. Push them down until they're seated solidly on the bottom of PC. It should not fit flush. The area under discussion is right here. We've got holes 
uh, A0 through A3 and we have a pair of holes that will accept what's called R2. Now R2 is not included in the kit. The combination of these holes and whether you use R2 or not allows for various situations regarding the display brightness. They've delineated the area under discussion in the uh, manual. They've given us three options that involve the holes and a even a fourth option, option D. I'm going to elect option A which is full brightness. That means we do not install R2. We put a small wire jumper between A1 and A0. You should have numerous small wires at this point, unless you're a real freaky clean person, laying all around your bench. These are cut off leads from capacitors, resistors, and whatnot. Just make a hairpin loop, and because my jumper wants to go between AO and A1. Uh, it's probably a good idea to leave it stick up a little bit. The reason being, if you decide you ever want to open that jumper up, you can just cut it. Now we've got to install the male header, which is up, up here, and the female header here. Now the instructions recommend installing the female header uh, onto the display board and the male header onto the uh, processor board. It doesn't really matter just the same way as we use the synthesizer to aid in installing these two 10-pin headers. We use the LCD supported by a couple of standoffs and these standoffs are in the kit. So now we just run right down here, solder 16 terminals here Flip it over, 16 terminals here. It looks like at this point all the soldering, except for this little strand of four-conductor cable, is done. 